Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, a smaller room, but uh, more cozy, more familiar. Very, very warm welcome to the Zuri Invest Night, as always in November, uh, in connection with the Precious Metal Summit Conference. Uh, I'm really happy uh, to be your moderator again, as usual, I would always say. But uh, it's always a pleasure and honor really to be here up on the stage. For those who don't know me, my name is Jochen Steiger. I'm the founder and CEO of Swiss Resource Capital AG. And I'm also the founder and chief editor of Commodity TV and Rohstoff TV. Before we start, always a big welcome and a big hand for Andrew Michaels and Petro Michaels for such a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Because you guys always put together a great event, great speakers, great companies. We can learn a lot, of course, from the keynote also. And I think it's always important to be in touch with the CEOs and to have the chance to really talk personally to them, which I do over 25 years now. And uh, it has always been yeah, a very, very good thing, I must say. Um, use the opportunity to talk to the table sponsors, to the CEOs, which are here. We will have also some time really to do that. And um, I want to introduce you also shortly here to our sponsors. We have main sponsors like Allied Gold with Peter Marone, who sits here. Then we have Max Silver with my friend George Paspalas. Where are you, George? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have the glasses, you know, that's too short. And uh, then we have Uranium Royalty and Uranium Energy Corporation with my friend Scott Melby, our US uranium expert. That will be really interesting because we have the metals tonight here of choice. Gold, silver, uranium. Those are the metals you really have to make sure that you are in. But before I continue, because I want to give you a little, not a lesson, but a little bit of an insight of some of my thoughts and the thoughts of our team. Uh, before that, I want to introduce you to our table sponsors, our main sponsors. I will introduce them just in front of the uh, panel discussion we have, as always. Let's start with Omega Metals. Omega Metals, formerly known as Matador Mining Controls, a significant land package of 120 kilometers, continues strike lengths in Newfoundland in Canada. Their recent success includes high-grade gold, silver, and copper. Copper, of course, is also a big metal for the future. Samples and their experienced team is backed by B2 Gold as a strategic investor. Then we have First Nordic Metals. First Nordic Metals is an advanced exploration stage company dedicated to establishing the next district scale gold mining company in Scandinavia, a wonderful jurisdiction. They secured control of the entire Basile Gold Project in joint venture with Agnico Eagle, which we know all here extremely well. Copper Gold. Copper Gold is exploring the past-producing Blackhawk gold mine and surrounding areas situated in the San Bernardino County, that's not in Switzerland, in California, for economic mineralization. Stay tuned for their updated permitting strategy for advancing this project swiftly. Then we have MFD Investment Holdings. MFD Investment Holdings is a private investment company that focuses on developing quick to cash flow mining assets with significant exploration upsides. They have a global team of technical experts and among other companies are supporting both Kappa Gold and Pelangio Gold for unlocking value. Omega Pacific. Omega Pacific is a minerals company at the forefront of Canadian exploration. Omega Pacific has successfully combined traditional exploration practices with modern technologies to uncover and capitalize on its highly prospective properties in British Columbia. Last but not least, Pelangio Gold, and you see we do it in alphabetical order so nobody can complain. Pelangio Exploration is currently developing the value of its gold exploration and resource projects located in Ghana and Ontario in Canada. The company operates with a strategy designed to capitalize upon property acquisition opportunities arising during bear markets that are positioned for the bull market's well creation. May I pass you that shortly? Thank you very much. 
Yeah, that is the program. You see, we are already in the start. Then from approximately 8 o'clock, we will do the panel discussion with our four main sponsors. And then at approximately 9.15, we will have the educational speech. But I'm really, really sure it will be a wonderful speech of Ronnie Stöferle, who is also a very, very good friend of mine and really happy that you are here, Ronnie, because we always have a lot of fun, not only in the interviews, but also privately, which is always great. And uh, I love when you speak in German, you have the Vienna style Schmäh, but in, in English, uh, we cannot do that, unfortunately. But with, it is really fantastic because I think he's one of the most knowledgeable industry experts and gold experts, especially what we have here in Europe. So really stay tuned with the new gold playbook. And then we will have a soft closing at 10.30. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, gold, silver. It is really, really interesting. This is the chart which I brought up in April 2024. And you know, I'm appointed figure chartist since 42 years. I know I look longer. That's right. But um, I really do that since I'm 14 years old. And it's, it's really crazy because those charts never lie. The only thing what we cannot predict is the timeline. That's the only thing. But through experience, you really can do a lot to really get targets out and to really see how long it might take. So this was in April uh, 2024, and uh, we set gold first price target 2430, then 2550. You see, we have been here around that level, yeah, and. Uh, my green pants work, because for those who know me, as long as I wear here on the stage green pants, gold and silver will rise, and the same for uranium. When I have red pants, sell everything. Yeah? <laughs> then, game over. But the gold breakout is definitely done. And that's the good thing. And I went on after that, when I saw that all, I did new calculations, and I came out at 2,750 which we exactly hit it. We had a high of 2,803, I think, in the variable trading. And now we have a little correction. To be honest, this is really a vertical flag where we used to say, hey, this has to come down because we are here now. Yeah? And it really went completely vertical. There's nothing. There, nothing came down, really. Yeah? And so from that perspective, I think we are here now. That is the next big thing. So, you see, we are here, 2,800. Yeah, the thing really moved. Now we are around here, 2,650. I have no problem with that. We will get a little bit reversal here. That's fine. You can go to 2,500. I have no problem. Why? Because this is massive. This is a new bull market. And this is why I say the next target is 3,000. That is for next year, the 3,950 I see for approximately 2027. And by the end of the decade, meaning 2030, 2031, I see the 6,050. I know this sounds completely mad. I know that. Yeah? But if you look around in the world, the U.S. have to finance 10 trillion U.S. dollars. Not in the future, not in 10 or 20 years. No. That is the next 18 months. And it was very interesting because I was at an event at UBS and uh, the chief economist, whom I know quite well, he was my first interview partner in German, funny enough, when I went into Switzerland. And I asked him, who is buying the garbage? And it was very quiet in the room and uh, everybody was like scratching their head. And he smiled. He said, we don't know. We have no idea. So what might happen? What do you think could happen if one or the other auction of treasury bills is not covered? There are not enough bidders. They have to raise the interest by 0.01, 0.1%. That would be panic, I can tell you, because everybody knows what the game is going. And so from that perspective, this is the answer to the Ukrainian war. This is the answer to the debt situation in the world, people are starting to understand, especially people who have a lot of money. Yeah? They start to understand, hey, we got to change something here. Approximately 0.9% of the world allocation is in precious metals. That's it. 
Ja? The whole gold producers, silver producers, they are fitting into Microsoft. They fit into an Apple. That makes no sense. Because without the silver producers, they cannot produce their products, funny enough. Yeah? And we have a large deficit. So from that perspective, it's getting really, really interesting. And this is why I think this is working. Yeah? And uh, it sounds exactly the same way crazy when I read the analysis of Bitcoin from Frank Holmes from US Global some weeks ago. He's predicting by 2031 million dollar for Bitcoin. Honestly, nobody can tell me what is Bitcoin worth. Bitcoin to me is the internal versus $10,000 because this is what it costs to mine it. That's the power cost. For the rest, hope, speculation, coolness, happiness, I don't know. Yeah? I don't know. But I think we live in such a crazy world, I really think this might be possible. That's why I bought and I said to my wife, listen, at 65 I get my AHV rente until I hold it. And then we see if I'm correct or Elon Musk is correct with his $3.6 million, Cathy Wood with $2.8 million. I don't know. But this is how crazy the world is. So why shouldn't we get this? I was in an analyst meeting some weeks ago in Zurich. And they said, hey, Jochen, what is your long-term price target for gold? And I said, well, $8,400. They looked at me and said, oh, that's really conservative. I was like, okay, I thought I'm the mad guy in the room. What have you? And they said, 16,000. I said, well, all possible. All possible. We will see. And they said, we see that within the next 10 years. That's 2034. That's not so far away. Yeah? And so I, why I'm telling you that, not because I'm cool and want to make some jokes here. This is how people are thinking. This is the new thinking of the world, of the behavior. Yeah? It's getting interesting. So why you should not put some money in? Let's see. And to be honest, with all my gold investments, I never lost money. I know people, they are telling me since $1,200, I'm buying physical gold, but I wait that it's getting cheaper. They have not bought one ounce. Not one ounce. They still wait to, that it's getting cheaper. I bought my last gold at 2270 yeah? Some people said, yeah, are you crazy? And I said, no, because I believe. And I'm pretty sure this is a solid value. And here we are, all good. I'm happy. I have a beautiful yield. Um, this was silver. So George would love that, for sure, with Max Silver as a silver producer. That was the buy signal December 2023. This we said uh, in 2024, again, a buy signal. So you see, there was 207050 when I was here on the stage, and we all know what happened. Whoops. Interesting, because that's also, that is a bull formation. I love that. That is fantastic. The whole thing up here alone gives me $41 and $62 sorry, uh, as a price target. And you might think, okay, Jochen is still crazy. Okay, I accept that. I have no problem. This $41, this is an in-between target. 50 is an in-between target because it was the all-time high what we saw, nominal. Yeah? In real terms, we should be already much, much higher. But that 62, this is only derived from this formation. Honestly, if I would take other formations longer term, I can go back easily 40, 50 years. I, my target is $114 for silver. Definitely. And you know why? This is not only a technical fairy tale or my technical wish list. No. This is the sixth year of a real deficit. And if you can, you can go back in history, the sixth year always was the starting year of a new bull cycle. We had that last time, 2004. This is when I bought silver at four or five dollars at the Edelmetall Messe in Munich. Everybody looked at me and was like, hey, what are you doing? Well, what do you do with those coins? I said, oh, I like it. It looks good. It's lovely. I put it into my inheritance. Whatever. I don't know. But I like it. Yeah? Five dollars. Now we are 30. Not a bad deal, despite 20 years. But the thing is, we have a paradigm shift in silver. And a lot of people still did not realize Silver in former years could rise because of investment demand. 
crazy guys like me buying coins and bars and looking for that shiny stuff and put it in the cellar, have a bottle of wine and love it, and that's it. You know what changed? Silver is an industrial metal. We expect by the end of the year that the silver demand is now 70% of the whole demand in the world is for industrial goods. China put on the last months every week 10 gigawatts of solar power. To give you an idea, 10 gigawatts of solar power means as average around 600,000 ounces of silver. So China alone this year will consume approximately 30 to 40 million ounces easily of silver. But what happens with that silver? It is stored away the next 25 years because it's in a solar panel. This is not coming back to the market, nor it can be recycled because you do not have mass recycling by now. It's economically completely not working. And despite what people are telling you, it's not working in the mass production. So the silver is stored away and the demand is rising and rising. We expect for this year 300 million ounces of silver deficit. That is real. Yeah? We expect for next year at least 250 to 300 million ounces. We do not have the storages left. Of course, some people say JP Morgan has 1.8 billion in the cellar. But uh, as smart as JP Morgan is, I don't believe that they are selling into this market. They would maybe do this when silver is at $100. Then it makes sense. So what you see is the demand is constantly higher than the supply. And this is why you should own a metal like this. By the way, same with uranium. Uranium is the same situation. Even worse, when is a po nuclear power plant the most expensive? When it's not producing power. So you need to make sure that you have enough fuel. And fuel mills, means uranium. Otherwise, it's not working. And so this is why we think uranium is like silver, maybe even more hefty than the silver market, because this is a market which is extremely growing, and I'm sure Scott will tell us uh, later on also some stuff here. And uh, uranium is really something where you do not have a futures market where you can manipulate, like with gold or silver, the prices. Impossible, because it, this is a contract market. In the spot market, maybe 5 to 10% is happening. That's it. Yeah? And this is why we think... Um, the demand is extremely stable, stably rising. Yeah? China, for example, is uh, putting online one nuclear power plant per quarter until 2040. That's only China. Now comes U.S. in the play. Yeah? We have in the U.S., we have uh, approximately 65% um, of the nuclear power plants have uh, yeah, an age between 40 and, and 50 years. You know what the U.S. is doing now? They are upgrading those nuclear power plants. They make security check, and then they get a permission for 80 years instead of 60. So nothing is getting off the grid because we know we need the power for the data centers, for the Microsofts, the Apples, the Amazons in this world. And this is why we think uranium is an extremely well investment. Um, we think this here, honestly... I think game over within the next four to six weeks, meaning until Christmas, because that makes no sense. This is complete nonsense, that price. And this is only done with a deal of 100,000 pounds here, 200,000 pounds there, but nothing substantial. This is the spot market. So we see $110 in the first half of 2025, and the 150, I think, could really happen in 2026. And I'm not talking about a squeeze. I'm not talking about uranium squeeze nor a silver squeeze. This is also something which might happen. And this is with uranium. Just have to make sure I'm not falling over here. Um, this is why 439 reactors are working, 67 under construction, 70 uh, new reactors we have connected in the last 10 years to the grid, and 431 reactors are planned and proposed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is without small modular reactors. They are not in the count. Yeah? 
So we cannot even quantify what that means, also for the silver market, because you need a lot of silver for those nuclear power plants. So I, I found this here. Uh, no, actually, Scott, you sent me that. Yeah, from, from Uranium Corgi. And uh, I'm, I'm now following the guy. The guy is completely crazy. But I love that. Mom, why is our family so rich? Because Dad believed in uranium. Yeah? And that's exactly one of the points I really love that. Because I would say uranium, silver, gold, good producers, good producing companies, physical stuff, and you will not go wrong. Definitely. So from that perspective, I think we will have a real great evening. And the same thing here. I love markets which are in a deficit. Because when you are in a deficit, this creates trouble. Because the companies, the producers, or the industry companies, they need the material because they cannot produce their products. So we are in the uranium market in a big deficit. We are in the silver market in a big deficit. And believe it or not, it depends how you calculate it. Also in the gold market, we are in a deficit. And so from that perspective, it's getting really interesting from next year onwards. Make sure that you have filled up your portfolios with gold, silver, and uranium and good companies, high-quality companies like the ones we have here tonight. And you don't need the magic drink like Asterix. I'm sure most of you know them, but know him. But uh, that's exactly how we are. We were going to have a lot of fun for the next years and we'll make a shitload of money. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. <laughs>